بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي لحبت في الله continuing on in our study of al usul thalatha by imam muhammad ibn abdul wahhab rahimahu allah ta'ala a great benefit of why this treaties is called uh, usul thalatha that one of our great mashayikh uh, imam uh, Sheikh Saleh Al Fozan, half of Allah Taala, he mentioned in his explanation uh, regarding this. So I thought it would be very beneficial for us to read this uh, benefit from this great Imam. He said, with regards to why this is uh, entitled, uh, the treaties is entitled Asulu uh, Thalatha, the three fundamentals or three principles. He said, لِأَنَّهَا هِيَ الْأَسَاسَاتِ لِدِينِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَلِأَنَّهَا هِيَ مَسَائِلَ لَتِي يَسْأَلْ عَنْهَا الْعَبْدِ هِينَ يُضَعْ فِي قَبْرِهِ لِأَنَّ الْعَبْدَ إِذَا وَضَعَ فِي قَبْرِهِ أو وُضِعَ فِي قَبْرِهِ وَسَوِي عَلَيْهِ طَرَاب وَأَنْصَرَفْ عَنْهُ وَالنَّاسِ رَاجِعِينَ إِلَى أَهْلِهِمْ جَاءَهُ مَلَكًا فِي قَبْرُ فَتَعَادَ رُوحُهُ فِي جَزْرِهِ وَيُحْيَا حَيَاتْ بَرْزَخِيَا لَيْسَتْ حَيَاتْ مِثْلَ حَيَاتَ الدُّنْيَا حَيَاتْ اللَّهُ أَعْلَمْ بِهَا فَيَجْلِسَانَهُ فِي قَبْرِهِ فَيُقُولَانْ مَنْ رَبُّكْ وَمَنْ دِينَكْ وَمَا دِينَكْ وَمَنْ نَبِيَكْ so this is a very beautiful statement by Imam uh, Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan. It gives you the basira of the ulama. And he said with, with regards to why this treatise is entitled uh, Asul al -Thalatha, he said, and this is due, or this is because it is from the Asasiyat. This is from the foundation of the religion of Islam. And because it is from the issues which a servant will be asked about when he is placed in his grave. And this is because the slave or the servant or the worshiper, uh, when he's put in his grave, they will place dirt over his grave and then the people will leave him, returning to their families. And then two angels will come to him in his grave. And they will return his soul into his body. And then he will be given the life of Barzakhiyah. This is the life in Al-Barzakh. And this is not the life similar to the life in the dunya. This is so imperative. This is a rud on, on the Sufiya. Those people who say, who try to make uh, istidlal, and this is istidlal batal. Listen to the batal that the Ahl Tasawwuf, they try to do. They, they try to say that, hey, the shuhada, you know, the, those martyrs and the enbiya and those people are, who are not in the salihin that are mentioned in the ayat about being alive, about being alive with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with their Lord, and that they're not really dead, that this shows that we can supplicate and seek their assistance because they are still alive and we can ask their assistance. This is what they use as a hujjah. But as the Imam just mentioned, the life of Barzakh is not like the life of the dunya. And only Allah knows how that life is. We believe that it's a life. It's a life of Barzakhiyah. But it is not like the life in this life when we're eating and drinking and we have to go to the restroom and we have relations with our spouses, and we do all these other activities. It's not the same type of life. So you cannot seek their assistance and ask as if they were with you in the room. Can you please pray for me? Can you, uh, you, know, you know, do this good deed for me and stuff? No. Those things we do, we ask of, uh, of people when they are living. But as far as the life of uh, Al-Barzakh, we don't know how that life is. So the Imam pointed this out, made it ishara, and made it very clear to this point. And then he said, and this is a life that only Allah knows how it is. So these two angels will sit in the grave. 
And they will say to him, who is your Lord? And what is your religion? And who is your prophet? So that's a, a big fighter from uh, Imam bin Fuzan uh, with regards to the meaning of Thalatha Usul or why the treatise is entitled the Thalatha Usul because it's the foundation of the religion. Those three important things that you'll be asked in the grave and may Allah bless us to be able to answer them in a manner that pleases him subhanahu wa ta'ala and bless us with comfort in our graves, I mean. So the Imam, he mentioned when we, uh, from the last part of the treatise, he was talking about, you know, the when you are asked uh, about your Lord and if you are asked, how have you come to know your Lord? How have you come to know your Lord? So then you should say, or the person should say, فَقُولْ بِآيَاتِهِ وَمَخْلُقَاتِهِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ يَلَيْنَ وَالنَّهَارِ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمْرِ وَمِنْ مَخْلُقَاتِهِ أَسَمَوَاتِهِ سَبَعْ وَأَرْضُونَ سَبَعْ وَمَا فِيهِنَّ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا so he said, and if you are asked, how have you come to know your Lord? He should say, through his signs and his creations, such as the day, the night, the sun, the moon, and the seven layers of, he of, of, uh, of heaven, and the seven layers of the earth, as well as what they contain and what exists between them. And then the evidence for this is a statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمِنْ آيَاتِيَ لَيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمْرِ لَا تَشِرُوا لِي شَمْسِ وَلَا لَقَمْرِ وَشِرُوا لِلَّهِ يَلَدِي خَلَقَهُنَّ إِن كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ Very important this ayat uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, I believe in Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, in Surah Al-Fusilat. And in this ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and from his, among his signs are the night and the day, and the sun and the moon. Prostrate yourselves not to the sun or to the moon, but prostrate yourselves to Allah who created them if you really worship him. Subhanallah. وَمِنْ آيَاتِ يَلَيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمْرِ لَا تَشِرُوا لِشَمْسِ وَلَا لِلْقَمْرِ وَشِرُوا لِلَّهِ يَلَذِي خَلَقُهُنَّ إِن كُنْتُمْ إِيَاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ If it is him you truly worship, these amazing, beautiful, magnificent signs. If you look look before you at what you see in this picture, these are places I have been to. These are my pictures. These are places I have hiked to. Is that not beautiful? Is that not gorgeous? Is that not from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Look how fascinating those trees are. Those are video clips of places I have hiked and I have worshipped Allah in those places and benefited greatly in those places. Walhamdulillah. And all you can say is Alhamdulillah. When you see a valley like that, and if, that's only a portion of the picture. If you were to smell the air, those are all from signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All that natural beauty, the fresh air, the, the scent of the trees, of the dirt, of the rivers that are nearby. When I make wudu in the rivers, all of that. Women ayati al wa nahara wa shamsu wal qamr. Those are from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the ayat koniyah. And then there are ayat shari'ah. So the ayat, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're div divided into two as the ulama divide them. The signs in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, these are ayat koniyah, like the beautiful trees and the greenery that you see before you. And the sun and the moon and the stars and the sky and, all, and, and, and even uh, one another, the intricacy of human, of human beings. These are from... The kon, uh, ayat koniya. Ayat shari'ah, of course, are from the ayat in the Quran. The verses of the Quran. Shari'ah. And those are just some of the benefits of this. And we'll continue on in the next sitting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.